I'm saying hello from Chicago. I think I'm going to get, start saying Chicago because many people are asking, Tony, where are you? So I, I'll be introducing myself and say, okay, I'm joining you here from Chicago. Feel free to type and let me know where you're joining from. We do have following from around the world. So yes, we have different people from around the world. So I want to welcome you. Also, we have different platforms running at the same time. We have the audio. Hi, Kemi. You said, great day, somehow landed here. Intrigued to learn more on the topic. <laughs> okay, good. You're joining from South Carolina. I appreciate that. Thank you. I see Rhonda, Lisa as well. Thank you so much. Okay, here's the deal. For those who are joining the audio, I actually also have uh, a slide running on the video on YouTube but I'll definitely try and be more descriptive as I share with you. So feel free to stay where you are or join us on YouTube, whichever one you feel comfortable with. The audio allows you to come up to the stage, to engage, to ask questions, to type, to engage, right? So just do what's, what pleases you. Today's topic is about embracing and understanding the metaphysical nature, okay? So I'm, I'm going deeply. I have my notes, my notes cards, but going really, really deep, okay? So are you ready? I see Ajayi joining also on Instagram. Greetings. Do like, subscribe, invite more people, follow. Listen, do all the, the normal stuff. Plus, focus and let's get started and engage. Okay. The very first thing I want to break down is that science, the medical field, has educated the world about your physical nature. And you are made up of systems. Okay? You have the digestive system, right? respiratory system, my auditory system. Listen, they educated us about DNA, all of those things, things you can touch, things that the realm of the physical has explored, um, right? S sought to educate themselves on through generations, right? Organs of the body, physical. Where the quantum leaves, right? Where the quantum leap leaves in is the edge of creation, what created life on and on and on, right? At the micro, at the, at the limit, the very minute level of creates creation, right? What's powering creation, okay? What's powering life, right? What's powering reality? So whether quantum physics, all this stuff, is that the energetic ability for creation, what created us, what created you, what powers you, what influences you, what drives you, that's the the era we're in, okay, is that now people are awakened to the reality that life is powered by th things that are not just physical, not just your heartbeat, right? Those things are important, but what's behind the scene? And so there are two systems, okay? I'm going to call out two systems. When I talk about metaphysical, even Facebook calls themselves meta now. The whole world is being moved to operate out more, predominantly out of your metaphysical. Okay, so I'm going to go deeper, but it, I know we're starting, it's getting hot. I, listen, you want to grab your pen and a paper. I'm going to take you on a journey, a very, very amazing journey. So yes, when it comes to our physical nature, you are somewhat educated about brushing your teeth, self-care, how to eat the right food, balanced diet, exercise, sleep well, you know, drink lots of water. Yes. That is a huge part of you. But there are two systems that you embody, okay, that many people are yet to study, understand. And those two systems are the most powerful two systems that power your entire being. The first one is your information system. Information. How you process information, how you receive information how you process information, how you distribute, how you communicate, how you reflect, how you present your information, what you embody, the thoughts you embody that has encoded you, that is powering your behavior, your thoughts, your action, your world, your entire reality. Information is flowing inside you and it's non-physical, it's metaphysical. Nobody can touch your thoughts, but they are real. Nobody can touch your ideas, but they are real. If you don't study the metaphysical, the non-physical side of you, the power of your thoughts, the power of your words, the power of your beliefs, the non-physical side of you is the software of your life. It powers your life. It's, it is programmable. And it has been programmed. 
And based on that program, your physical nature from your DNA encoded information passed generationally to the thoughts you have control over, to the information that powers all of the organs of your body. Listen, that stuff is powerful. Okay? The second side, the second system that is yet to be studied and it's been unpacked through the quantum, right? Quantum physics is also studying these things now. Is your energy field. Your electricity. <laughs> Okay, your electric, how, the power that makes you, that gives you life. You see, there's the physical nature. We know what that is. They tell us how blood flow, white blood cells, red blood cells, oxygenated blood, oxygen, you know, carbon, right? Carbon dioxide, like breathing in, breathing out. We studied that through the traditional school system. They took time out to study, put those things in books, get you in class to study your own physical being brush your teeth what happens digestion that happens you know the the, the how your tongue your ears right all the physical stuff we are somewhat educated right the traditional system brought that to life at some level for everybody so that you are aware okay your senses five senses sight smell right tongue taste tongue we were educated by right we've been taught the power of the physical senses the physical nature your physical nature right and your physical body and how you should care for it okay so greetings everyone i've get we've gotten started lisa everyone if you have questions please drop it reactions drop it as well again we i know more people will join as time goes on. There's also Team Replay. Welcome. We have more people joining us. I know we've we've grown some, some of our subscribers and people are like, Toi, where have you been? How come I've never heard about you? Listen, when the time is right, things happen. So welcome to the space. We also have my school, my academy at Toin, umsc.com, the Quantum Leap Academy. This is where we do the work. This is where I teach. This is where I coach. This is where I, where I empower those who want to learn how to build their personal power grow their influence and grow their wealth as well okay very practical stuff thank you so much for joining us so the two systems you know the other system the physical system the non-physical side the metaphysical side of you i share the first side information your information system your software part of it is programmable part of it goes generationally the way you look right skin color eye color hair color your physiology, how you manifest physically is informed by genetics. As much, right? But where is that information coming from? On what you should look like, <laughs> how your hair should go, <laughs> you know, the features, your physical features. What is governing your physical feature, right? Is genetics that is passed down from your parents' lineage. That's information encoded in your DNA that then reflects in your physiology, how you are. Things carry, right? I, because when I share, right, I want to start with things you can understand. I want That's why I use all the stories, these analogies. This is why I compare things and, and I compare and I say, okay, just like the physical, then non-physical. Because ultimately, my goal is that anybody should be able to understand and comprehend these complex realities. So that's why I share the way I share, right? I laugh, I share, I make jokes of it. But these are extremely complex things that phd <laughs> so people who are reading studying books like professors they still don't understand but they are trying to understand i come from a very academia like my husband is a university professor my late father was part of establishing two universities i have my own academy that i've built out for those who want to do this work and quantum leap into success so I, I understand how dynamically complex these things are. Listen, science, this is the edge, the, the bleeding edge, the, the cutting edge of science today. Okay, because where the world is going requires everybody to be educated about the stuff. Where, you, where life is being dragged into is into the metaphysical. Listen. Life, future life, AI, all those things, this technology, Meta, Facebook, turning the right, the work that Elon Musk is doing with his brain, 
projects, with Twitter, right? Autonomous vehicle. The things that are being worked on today to create the future, the future of the world will be run more metaphysical than physical. Today, you're driving your car. Tomorrow, somebody will be driving you. Today, you're cooking your food. So tomorrow, somebody will be doing all of the, the physical things that humans were trained through traditional education, okay, to prioritize. Those things are going to be handed to a lot of machines. More investment is being made for the machines, AI, to be powerful, right? So what does it mean to be human? Where is your power then? Where is your creativity? Where is your productivity? Everybody now has to come home and re-educate themselves but the school system is not doing it your mind is yours your energy is yours if you allow it to be misdirected hijacked blame yourself don't blame the government because the government doesn't yet own your mind they won't own your mind but trust me there could come a day when they implant stuff okay okay let, let me let me bring it in let me bring it in because we are the leading edge of this thing so i can see it and i'm calling it out Every human, every average human must be educated in their human design. It's a requirement because the traditional school system did not prepare you for where the world is going, where it is and where it is going. And many people do not have control over their mind, their hearts, because they've been misprogrammed. Okay, I have my notes. Let me stay on focus. Okay, so the two systems, your information system, encoded with information, DNA, there are things past generation, family to family, okay? There are things that also govern how your organs are powered, how they behave, hereditary stuff, you know that. The parts that you have control over, your thoughts, your belief system, there are certain, at least two groups of programming that is in your control. There are some that is not in your control, is generational, there are some that your lifestyle influences. You are encoding yourself. You are creating your reality. You are manifesting physically certain conditions that is based on you, not your generation, not your family. Is that when you are here, certain thoughts program you, certain thinking programs you, certain beliefs make you manifest certain identity and behavior. That's what one of the things you have to control. The second system is your energy system, your energy field, how you consume energy. I'm going to use, I'm going to break it down because again, I want people to understand these complex topics because sometimes for some people, the moment you hear energy, something just happens and you run away. <laughs> it's ignorance. Please guys, we have to educate ourselves. Go back to your physics world. What is energy? Ability to do work. Every work you're doing, you're consuming energy, you're transferring energy, you're using energy to create reality. Let's borrow some, some of the physics. You know, sometimes people say all oh, the things they taught you in school, they are not useful. Let's make some useful. The small physics and chemistry, reaction, chemical reaction, right? physical, electrical circuits. Can we use that? We, but let's, let's, for one moment, realize and reuse some of the things you learned in that, uh, th those degrees you have. You went to school, biology, chemistry, physics. Let's put them to use for reality, <laughs> okay? So when I say energy, as a being, energy flows through you. It comes into you. You eat food, right? Why do we eat food? To extract energy for our cells, to power the cells. Your cells need energy to be powered. Okay, at the minimum, hopefully we can agree on that. Hi, Lona. Greetings to see you. Hi, Akalub. Uh, we have more people joining. Thank you, thank you. Am I going too fast? I have a lot to cover. So, am I? But tell me though, am I going too fast? I can pace myself. <laughs> I can pace myself. I'm so excited though. So, should I? Let me poll those who are here. Am I going too fast? I know some people are taking notes. I've not even seen, listen, I have all kinds of notes. That's probably why I'm speaking fast, right? I've not even covered. I've not even started notes one. <laughs> I'm just laying the foundation. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pace myself. Okay. Are we cool? Good. So two systems, two metaphysical systems, your energy field, right? Where you eat food, to power your physical body 
but you also have you also pack a lot of internal energy that can be released if you need to run right now energy will be released to get you running the power right the ability to do work yeah we know that one definition emotion emotion right energy in motion that's the definition i'll give you the language to use to understand these things i'm going to make it very very digestible when i'm teaching in my school listen we we want i want to teach for comprehension not just for excitement but for people to understand because once you have comprehension then you can use it you can only use the things you understand so my goal is to help people understand okay so how you taking energy okay how you process it how you consume it and what you choose to do with your life force it's a choice the information you decide to embrace and bring into your system when you read a book do you know what you're doing you are extracting information from the surface of the book and you are integrating it into your own information system you are bringing it in you are ingesting information you see i want us to agree because once i start dropping these advanced things i don't want you to be shocked or surprised when you open a book and you read a book before you read the book the information was outside you right so you didn't there are many books in the world now that you don't know what is inside the book and what is inside the book is not inside you the information inside the book you've not ingested it so it's not inside you so you don't know you don't know what you don't know you only know the things you know consciously and there's conscious knowledge and unconscious knowledge in fact many of the unconscious things you don't even know it until it bubbles up to your consciousness men bible will say eyes have not seen nor ears heard what right what god has planned for you but trust me encoded in your spirit are many information purpose when people are seeking purpose direction right superior intelligence for powering their lives subconsciously that knowledge may be there but your mind your physical the physical realm of you may not know who you are this is where people get lost in life and they are saying when we talk about self-discovery okay when we teach you know i have programs on self-discovery spiritual formation why because there is also information already encoded in you you don't have awareness about who you are and so certain times people behave beneath their original design okay i put that out there for free again i'm starting with saying physical non-physical just to keep it's very very simple when i talk about metaphysical i just want to use the phrase non-physical because you could get very dynamic right i don't want to complicate it you you know what's what you can see what you can touch call it the physical realm the non-physical that you cannot touch with your five senses you cannot experience with your right your hands your high like you can't see it you can't smell it you can't taste it you can't hear it you can't um touch it let's call all of those realities parts of you let's just put it in the same bucket just for the sake of keeping this not too complex let's say it's non-physical you can't touch it through the physical senses but it is real okay it is it's just like this computer or the phone in your hand you see there are parts of that computer in that phone that you can touch you can see that you can hear the sound it's making right you can experience part of your computer part of your phone physically but when it comes to the software okay the words programmed i used to be a programmer the codes the machine language machine level language 010101 plus the programming language that humans have put the language the compete the, the, listen there's a language machine level language that only the machine understands 0101 that's it but there is a layer that humans use english language and codes and command codes to type to influence the machine language it will convert there's they have converters that convert if you say if this then this there is a there's a layer of interpreter that then interprets it into machine language trust me your your mind and your body and your heart 
they have similar things going on. Your mind interprets your vibrations and sensations into consciousness. The subconscious side of you vibrates at the frequency of your energy and then sensation. Okay? So I'll be dropping, I'll drop a few advanced things and then I'll back off because depending on where you are, you know, there are scholars, behave, right? Scientists, neuroscientists diving into this world that will understand what I'm saying, but I'll put it in layman's time enough that you can understand and appreciate and make use of. But the first thing I, I'm just laying out that I want you to agree is that there are two systems that you need to educate yourself on. Information, how you're taking information, how you process information, because your information is used to manifest your physical realm. And then your energy field, that information is used, okay, to power what your energy is going to create, to instruct your energy, what it should do for you. Let me say that again, because that's one big thing that you have control over. When you realize that your energy, the life force always needs instruction. It doesn't just create without um, approval, without your approval. You see, this is the part of you. It's like, if you don't eat food, your digestive system is not going to digest anything. But when you consume food, you are giving instruction that your body should digest it and make use of it, that it's good for you. Okay? So the life force you carry is not going to create, it's not going to do anything until you tell it what you want it to do, what you want it to manifest. So conscious thinking, consciousness, right? Choosing wisely. Deciding what you want, processing it in a very um, intentional way, non-intentional way is how you create an intentional life. For those who are not intentional with this thing I'm teaching in my school, what whichever way you handle your thoughts is how your thoughts will handle you. However, whatever relationship you, you, you have, with your own, info, the information inside you, the stories, the belief system, how they make you feel. Do they make you happy? Do you like the thoughts inside you when you are by yourself, right? What you carry, what you embody, what, you've, what has entered your system. You see, two computers can be side by side. One can have viruses, the other one can be cleaned up. How they will perform, your performance, the performance of those two machines will be dependent on the optimization of their own programming. So here we have nature, nurture, culture. You came into the as a baby, right? Innocent, fully loaded with power. However, how have you been programmed? Okay, because what the journey is, what the challenge is right now is taking your power back. Right, is whatever has happened up until now, with or without your consent, with or without your permission, with or without when you have agency or control, where you are, the, the conversation we need to have now and the work at hand, the work, the assignment, if you understand the assignment, okay, let's use that phrase. If you want to understand the current assignment that God is trying to awaken people to is own your programming and evaluate the existing programming and determine what is useful and what is not. This is when we start saying learn, unlearn, and relearn. When you hear people say learn, unlearn, and relearn, Lona says fine by me. Okay, great, great. Yes, yes, yes. So when we say learn, right, unlearn, we learn. It means there are new things you need to learn. I'm sharing some, right? Like my school is loaded with a bunch of the, those things to empower you, set you free. Okay? So there are new things you must learn. There are old things you want to trash. Trash can. Find the viruses and delete them. Okay? 
And then relearning is optimization. There are old knowledge that needs an upgrade. How you used to be, right? Okay, let me give you another. Um, there's a program. There's a life strategy um, workbook in my school. There's a three-hour masterclass on the game, game plan, 12 strategies for winning in life and business. And part of the life strategy workbook, let me just give you one assignment that my students um, go through. And it's kind of explaining better the learn, unlearn, relearn. I say it this way. Like one of the important things you, you may want to do is, number one, what do you continue doing? Because you are at a junction right now, a decision point right now, this moment. Every moment, if you practice mindfulness, every moment, every time that takes second minute is an opportunity to for you to choose what the next moment will be. So come into the present tense, present now. This moment, okay, you always decide, do you want to continue doing what you've always been doing that works for you? Okay, when you evaluate your current, right, who you are today, and you put it next to your visions of the future, who you perceive yourself to be part of manifestation. You want to be a business owner. You want to be successful. You want to, you want to be presidential. You want to do whatever those desires are. Who you are today and who that person, that next version of you, right? For example, if you go into school system, right? How you enter the school system is not how you come out. There's a lot of intellectual maturity that is required, right? For you to graduate. So everybody's in the process of graduation. Quantum leap, manifestation, self-actualization, moving yourself from dependency, survival into the fullest version of yourself. Okay, so that exercise says, if you compare your current version and that future version, do you both agree on certain things that you need to continue to do? Number one. The second one is stop, stop doing. Are there certain things you do today that is inconsistent with that future version of you? You know these things. These are the inner battles, behaviors, or right things you know you want to stop doing. You don't want to be getting angry anymore. You you know those things. You want your relation right. Is that one is continue doing? My, me and my future version, we agree that this is good. Let's keep doing and behaving this way. Number two is stop. Your future version is speaking to you and saying. God it doesn't approve of that. If you get to the height of success, you're not going to be allowed to think that way, behave that way, speak that way. So it's calling at you right now. God is saying, stop for your promotion. The third one is start. Are there certain things your future version loves doing, right? Habits that it is doing for it to maintain success that you are not currently doing today. As example, if you say you want to be fit, you want to exercise, your future self may be somebody that goes to the gym at least three times a week, but you today, you don't even get up and do anything. Your future version will be screaming at you. Please start this behavior today because our future version, the certain the person I see you to be in the future is somebody that actually adopts this discipline is disciplined enough to show up to the gym at least three times a week. But who you are today has not yet adopted that principle. I just gave you an example. That's just one exercise that my students have to undergo for their quantum leap experience. Because ultimately, you can be consuming content, consuming content. But if you don't change at your belief system, behavior level, if you don't go deeper, if you don't start certain th new things, you don't stop things that's not working anymore, and then you don't carry forward, you know, your faith, the things that you see yourself still doing in the future that is part of your core that you want to maintain into that future. If you don't articulate those things, content just buries all this work. People don't change. They don't transform. They don't, they don't quantum leap. So content is not what I'm talking about. It's inner work. Okay, this inner work is where your quantum leap experience will be. So that's just an example. When people just say learn, unlearn, relearn, right? Is that many people don't know how to translate it to reality. And so the way I use it is certain things you are doing today that you want to continue doing that is useful to your future, maybe your fate, 
right? Your love for this, your love for this, right? Certain parts of your personality that you're not going to change. You don't want to change. This is a decision. You have the power to re reprogram yourself. This is part of reprogramming. You can make it. You're just a decision away from your quantum leap, from a transformation. Just decide. I want to stop doing this. I want to start doing this. I'm going to continue doing this. Personalize this and you start seeing it. Because now you have to discipline yourself along that line. You have to hold yourself accountable. So that's just an example. So let's keep going. Any questions so far? Hi, Richard, Lisa. Uh, thank you. We've had more people. The fashion engineer, Eniola, Ikaluk. Greetings. Okay. If I missed anybody, apologies. Do type. Let us know where you're joining from. Uh, feel free to ask questions, reactions. So let me go into my notes now, okay? So you are made up of systems, physical system, digestive systems, respiratory system, this system, that system. The two systems that governs your metaphysical and absolutely influences the physical side of you in manifestation. I've called it the information system. This is my own language. So you're not going to find this out there. I use my own language. These are original materials from Coach Towing, okay? I work with world leaders. Listen, I've served as strategists for the biggest companies in the world. Listen, I used to be a programmer. I've done, I've gone deep into many things, okay? So I'm a leading expert in this space, entrepreneurship, economic development, wealth creation. And trust me, the biggest wealth I'm trying to help you unlock is the wealth inside you. The wealth inside you is the one we're trying to get to. You need the power. You need to unlock the power to prosper, to bring that out into manifestation. But there's a whole lot of layers and layers of stuff. Um, someone says, how many years ahead should you plan this? Should it be your future self in five, 10 years? Ooh, I love this. I love this. This question is, okay, so how many years ahead should you think about your future self? I love this question. Let me, the way I'm going to answer it, okay? I prefer to not just plan long-term, but to do short-term planning. And the best shortest term that I do is a year. And the way I say this, so you'll find me uh, beginning of every year, right? Launch certain programs beginning of each year for my students. The reason is because I want them to set a target that by December, they have tangible proof of their own growth. Because what I have seen is that people move year to year because they don't, they don't have goals that are measurable in a year. They waste a lot of time. When people are not intentional, they waste all the time God gives them. And then December will come and they say, oh, the year has gone. And then they do, uh, what do you call it every year? Uh, when people start trying to do everything they, they didn't do the previous year, they now say January, they are going to do it. You're going to lose weight, January. You're going to do this, January. Then every it's just procrastination. People procrastinate when you are not intentional about what you want to use your year to manifest. People will arrive at December 31 and then they'll be making promises, making new promises to themselves that they are not about to keep. So the year runs out. The way you keep it is not to be 10 years, five years. Just make it a yearly thing. That by this year, December, how do I want to feel? Who do I want to be? What do I want to have created? That when December comes and the, the, the part of the celebration is celebrating who I have become because of what I did in that year. That's 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 the secret I, I do for my students. Because it's easier for people to say, oh, five years, 10 years, oh, this, this, mm -mm. You see how, you know, what will help you eat your uh, Christmas chicken very well, buy gifts very well. It, I want you to feel fulfilled that the year came and, and, and you did something with yourself and you like who you are in December. Because if you love who you are in December, January will be another exciting time to run another race. But usually what happens is people arrive in December with regrets. And I, I know I should have done this. I know I should have done that. I know I should have started the company. I know I should have traveled. I had many, many things I promised myself in January. But you know what? It didn't happen. It, we will move it to next year. We'll procrastinate it till next year. So procrastinators don't hold themselves accountable because they don't think in terms of this thing. Just say, this year, by December, 
Okay, the version of me that I want to roll into the next year must be different. Just that simple. Don't wait till, don't make this, don't make wait till December 31 to be regretting that the year is passing. Be rejoicing. So that 31, you are rejoicing into a new opportunity to become greater. So when you think about the school system, they measure you and grade you year by year. Just start practicing that for yourself. Okay, so I love that question. I hope it helped. Five, 10 years will take care of themselves if you do this yearly. Don't worry about five, 10 years. Don't worry. If every day you commit to December 31, trust me, and you make it an habit, in 10 years time, you, you won't, even the version of you 10 years, you won't even, it's, it's a version you would never have dreamt of. Okay, there's another question. Yes, yes, bring your questions, guys. Let's make this interactive. Okay, the fashion engineer says, vision boards and new year resolutions, I'm guilty. <laughs> Listen, oh my gosh. Some people ask me, what do I think about vision boards and everything? They work only, only when you change your beliefs. Only. So I'm not going to tell you they don't work. They only work for the people who do what I'm saying. It works. If you walk it, it's not magic. Vision budding is not magic. Vision bud is a commitment you are making to yourself to become a new version of you. And you are making it visual enough that you remember. And trust me, you are the one to walk out all of those transformation within you. But if you think it is magical just because you stick pictures and this on the, on the, this, and you don't show up at that dimension, nobody is calling you for an interview or putting you anywhere. If you are not ready, if you don't, if you don't work it out, if you don't work out the visions you carry for your life, it doesn't manifest. It's just a remember, it's just a reminder of what you are working towards. That's a vision board. You are committing to yourself to do the work, to show up in this dimension, to be worthy of this accolade. And until you are worthy, keep working it. Many people say, I did vision, vision, but then they will go and sit down and be doing Netflix skipping scrolling four hours every day on social media and you say i did vision board who is going to work on that vision you want to build a house who is going to construct your house you don't show up to the construction site to check out the plumbing the bricks that everything is working when is the house going to show up it's still a fantasy you can if a, a, an architect can draw anything on a piece of paper it's a guide of what you want to build but if that architect takes the plan and files it and is happy and refuses to buy materials, use energy to construct the building, listen, it's still fantasy, it's still in his imagination. So vision board works if you work it. If you show up, if you take the classes, if you grow up, all of those things you put on your, your vision board, they are all yours to have when you graduate. It's like you go to school, they tell you after five years, your graduation. Yes, your graduation is certain and approved if you pass all your exams. That's what I'm saying. God will give you. He's not going to hold back anything from you. All is yours. All of it. Everything on your vision board. You want to be here. You want to buy this. You want Whatever those dreams are, you are a creative being. Listen, the nature of God is inside you. He gave you his breath to create, to manifest. All things are yours. But, okay, God also gave you systems that you use to create that reality. But And if you refuse to create it, if you refuse to use the time, energy, and resources, if you refuse to discipline yourself to prioritize everything in your vision board, to become the person you need to become, to claim everything on your vision board, it doesn't work for those people. So you will see the people that have testimonies that tell you, I had this on my vision board this years ago. I wanted to be on Oprah. I wanted to be this. And it's worked. Only the people who have testimony are the people who are showing up every day for their future. You see them flying, investing, doing events, showing up here. They are growing. They are busy growing into that person. They've committed to become that person. So that's the key. Okay, so vision board works if you work it. Use that phrase. <laughs> As a writer, I give people, listen, remember, work it. 
work it, work it, work it. Just remember, I want you, I want that to stick. Work your vision, write the vision, make it plain that he who reads his will run. Bible. If if at least listen to Bible, why do we write vision? Right? And if you have vision, you start attracting provision. So vision boards and those who commit to that vision will gain provision, will gain everything they need to become that person. If you say you want to eat spaghetti, the ingredients, you have to seek out the ingredients. And if you are committed to eating spaghetti and you don't change your mind, you start working out all of the ingredients to help you make spaghetti. Vision works that way, similarly. Okay, very helpful. Thanks. Okay, good. Yes, yes, I love the question. So let me keep going. So the two systems, your information, how you taking information, how you process information, how you release information. You know, when you talk about communication, right? Is that how you deliver, okay? The thoughts in your mind in of itself is a skill. Because communication is how you negotiate with life, what you want out of life. Bible will say, the mouth, okay? He who loves it will eat the fruits of it. Is that your mouth is part of your tools for attracting the things you want. I won't talk too much about that, but I'm just calling these things out. I want you to think about your energy and your thoughts, your information system, all kinds of information inside you. They are programmed a certain way, and I teach those things, how they are programmed, because you can reprogram right? You can, um, you can remove the viruses, the insecurity. Another word I call it is insecurity. There are certain spaces. They use other phrase. Okay. For those who are in the phrases of, uh, manifestation that I teach Christian principles, and I'm going to still share some of those things today. Okay. So when I use the phrase, insecurities there are other people that will tell you shadow work this 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 i don't i don't recommend that what i teach if i have time again i have my notes i will tell you what i teach how to address those things okay and it follows biblical principles okay everything i'm going to teach you can it's it's there are there are different school of thoughts okay on human design manifestation, um, you know, they'll tell you you have a dark side, da, 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 da. Some of you have gone through those things. That's not my own. That's, that's, I, I, everything I teach is original to me. Okay. It's original. Okay. Let me start. Uh, let me organize these things. Okay. We, again, cards. I, I have my notes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining. I hope you're having a great time. We also have my school. Fine for okay, good, good. I've, I've already responded to that. So, if you understand that you have the the information, just again, my phrase I call it information processing, your information systems. I call the other one your energy processing system, and then your body, your emotional processing system. Is that when all is said and done, your physiology, right? How you respond to the chemical reactions in your body that creates, right, the manifestation of emotion, how you react when certain energy is fired in you with your thoughts and your energy, when they produce, when you're thinking you're angry, suddenly, right, some form of stuff runs through you and then you say you're angry. Before you were angry, you were thinking thoughts of hunger, what you don't like. I will tell you some of those things that you can use to reprogram yourself. So just come with me, okay? If I need to split this into two, I'll do that. So realize that your, your information system is programmed by the type of thoughts you, 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 you bring into your being. And for you to really understand and appreciate this, this is what I'm going to say. The thoughts inside you matter to your success. Remember that there are thoughts not inside you. There are things you don't know. Now, there are certain things you know you don't need to know. There are certain things you need to know you don't know. 
Okay, if I unpack that, there are certain thoughts that is not well, that is not uh, in your favor. Just because thoughts exist does not mean you need to put it in your computer. <laughs> that it's not every software you need to be downloading on your computer. Those who consume content, you download the wrong things that has been encoded with virus. You did that to yourself. You now need to be searching for the virus, right? Some people go to a certain place. Suddenly, somebody said something. You're, you're still fighting those thoughts right now. They took you down. It could be in your hand. Like, that's why in, in the program, the Life Strategy Workbook, I also consider nature, what I call nature, not your culture, to create awareness of how nature has shaped you, how nurturing has shaped you, how culture has programmed you, and then to interrogate those programming, are they in your favor? Are they aligned to your future version? Because you have the power to unpack those things and to say and to resist and to say no. No matter where you're coming from, if you sit and do this work, as long as you have awareness and you also develop the power, the emotional capacity to confront your reality, to see yourself. Now, this thing is intense. That's why a lot of therapy work, okay? Depending on how intense and fierce, if you are, okay, let me say this. Some people are running away from their past. Some people are running into their future. The energetic charge of those two people are different. Listen, the only way you separate yourself from your past, okay, is to go inside yourself and the memories you pack to delete certain things and to reprogram and rewrite new stories. Because let me tell you, let me teach you something that is very advanced about time, the concept of time. Many people will say, my past, my past, my past. Trust me, you are carrying your past on your frame. Your past is not separate from you. Your past is inside you. Sit with that. You know, many people will say my past. And when you think about your past, you think your past is at a distance. No. Everywhere you go, all the stories you're telling yourself about your, what you're experiencing, you are using it to create memory. So whenever you say my past, my past, my past, it is the story about your past that you packed and you used to create memory. That is what you have control over. You can't go back, in, you can't travel in time. You can't go back into the past, but you can fix the past in you. You can settle the score in you. You can take power over your past in today if you do the inner work. And the past will lose its control over you. That's how you fix the past because what your memories about the past becomes reality because you encoded it with emotions, feelings, and you created a storyline that is making you weak, tired, right? Frustrated. Whatever emotions your past is creating that you, you don't like, that is something that you stored inside yourself. And as long as, and once you do this inner work to see the past, it takes a lot of therapy. I have skills that I teach because. When you want to quantum leap, if you don't do this work, you will see your past in the future. Why? Because you will manifest. Your mind copies all the stories that you have used to say, this is my life story. This is what happened to me. This is what is happening to me. This is what will happen to me. You are commanding. You are programming. Right? Whatever you are carrying as reality, your mind just copies and pastes it and you keep seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. This is manifestation. You keep seeing in the physical realm the stories you are carrying. Your mind just copies and pastes, copies and pastes. If you say men are this, you see men that proves you right. Women are this, you see men, women that proves you right. If you say um, um, blacks are this, you see blacks behaving the way you see. Why? Because that story that was ingrained in you becomes your reality until you write a new story. So you cannot go into the past to go and be talking to anybody, this, 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 this. Time comes and goes and renews itself. You see, 
The concept of time is created by the, the, the way the earth moves around us itself and around the sun. A day is when the earth rotates, okay? 24 hours, day and night, 12, 12 hours facing the sun, 12 hours moving further away from the sun, full darkness, night. The side that faces the sun is day for them. The, the side that is away from the sun is night for them. The head moves around the sun a year. Okay, you leap here, the extra hour. Okay, let's just stay with a day. What creates a day? This concept of time. Whatever age you are right now, what it just means is how many earth rotation have you lived on the earth? That's what your age is. Because the concept of time, how your birth date is measured, <laughs> is how many earth rotation have you experienced in your reality? When we say years, the earth rotated 365 times, okay, in one year, multiply it by the number of your age. That is how many earth rotation you have experienced in reality. Let's get these things right. So the concept of time, as humans measure it, your clock, your watch, your bed date, at the, the real measurement is how many times has the head rotated and you and I have, you've experienced. That is time. So you cannot reverse the head's rotation and run back into 20 years ago. The earth is not stopping for you. Keep so listen as we are talking right now. It's doing its thing. Look at your time. It's it's running. It's you don't have control over the rotation of the head. But I'm telling you the things you have full power on. You can look inside yourself and say the story of these dates, of these people, of this reality that's not in my favor. The information I packed into myself is not making me feel good. And I want to feel good. So if you want to feel good, it's time to let go of those stories. Because as long as you are holding those stories to be true, they will continue to be true. When you say they are a lie and you let it go, your energy, it, right? It separates your energy from that information and it lets you go. You, you have freedom. This is top. If everybody in the world can just understand this thing, you set yourself free from entanglements and thoughts of things that don't make you well. You know, you are rehashing those thoughts, rehashing the scenario. The head has come and gone. Atmosphere has come and gone. The sun, it has, the earth has, it, the earth has done. It's in that time has come and gone. The only control you have is today's rotation, this moment, and the information you, you pack on yourself that is making you unwell, making you feel dysregulated, unhappy with life, with people. You did that to yourself. And I'm saying there are stuff that is so deep, it's clinical. So I don't want to minimize this, but I give people everyday skills, just like we we'll say, brush your teeth, shower every day, well care. There are skills that every day we ought to have been taught to make ourselves feel better. Instead of carrying stories over and over, you're carrying it day one, day two. Stories that you can let go of, you can forgive and let go of. You can, you, because all of this is setting you free so that when you move into your new era, you are feeling good in your own body. Because when you pack stories of negativity and you don't clean it out, you are carrying gems around you. You refuse to brush your teeth because gems attach to your teeth. You, are, you start having cavities. When you expose yourself to certain realities that are unpleasant, part of this work, part of this work is also as Christians, this is where, spirituality ought to come in useful for us. What the Bible tells, forgive, let's go. Why? Why is God saying? Because he wants to give you a better life, but this story keeps repeating itself. You keep seeing this story because you say it's true. So this is something for Christians. If you want to practice Christianity, okay? If you really want to understand the stories that polarize you negatively, that makes you angry towards somebody and life and everything. They are not good for you. The time has come and gone. The power you have is to separate your energy from that story and you delete it from your system. I'm, I'm insisting on this thing because part of manifestation is that story 
will repeat itself until you let go. You will recruit other people to keep hurting you the way those people hurt you without you knowing that it's because you are holding on to that story. Life will continue to give you what you believe. So it may you may need to go to a therapist. You may need to do this. Do it. In my school, these are skills you can actually access less than the price of a therapist. Okay. <laughs> okay. In fact, this is even... What I just gave you, a therapist will even tell you their secret. They will just tell you, come back again. Ah, they will listen to that story. Oh, okay. Okay. And then you carry that story again. And if that's why therapist too wants you to pay them. I've told people before, some of the people you are, you are entrusting yourself to, they think they care more about how much they can extract from you financially than making you well quickly. You see, what I just told you now, if you sit with it, you change your life. Some people won't tell you the secret because you, you they also want you dependent on them. This is about freedom. Set yourself free. Set your mind free. Set your emotions free. Invest in the things that will set you free so you are not dependent on anybody. That's another one for free there. So how do you take your power back and take control? That's what we are talking about today. So one thing I want to share briefly, see, I'm taking my notes, I'm taking my time, I'm juggling which one is important because I want to pass on key things, okay? Thank you, everybody. Okay, good. Lisa, feel free to come up to the stage if you want to engage or use the chat area as well. Okay, so let me bring something in. Mm, this one is deep. This one is deep. Actually, it might be part two, but this is deep. You see, in certain circles of manifestation and all of these things, even there are scholars in that space, when they talk about your dark side, and then some people talk about shadow work, integrating your dark side, da 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 stuff. I don't adopt that. I don't recommend it. As a Christian, I don't say integrate that. However, there is a principle that governs what they are trying to achieve that you must understand. Okay? I'm taking it slow because I've gotten into a very touchy, very, very sensitive aspect but if you understand it you change your life forever so i'm going to pace myself on this one i'm not going to rush it again in the realm of manifestation many people have unpacked and, and discovered like scholars and scholars scholars psychotherapists all of those things they've, they've discovered that no matter how much people want to move forward there are certain dark sides that can truncate self-sabotage and limit you from success. And so they came up with some psychotherapy work stuff that has also gone mainstream. And the most prominent side of those things is when you say shadow work, the dark side, integrate it into your reality, find out who you are, the darkest side of you, gain familiarity, okay, to those sides of you, and don't let it surprise you so that you can integrate. They have a lot of stuff. And I get... I don't recommend that, but the principle is what I want to highlight. And then I'll make some recommendations from Chris, from a Christian standpoint. Because you are not to integrate, in the Christian faith, you are not to integrate your dark side. You are actually to be renewed, to renew your mind, to change. Right? The Holy Spirit calls for our transformation and renewal. That's the difference. Okay, is that Holy Spirit calls out the works of the flesh, all in the Bible, the works of the flesh. It's called the works of the flesh, right? And Holy Spirit, the Christian faith, there's forgiveness. Christian faith talks about sin and consequences of sin. So you don't integrate sin. Jesus came to wipe away sin. This is the core of where we differ. Their approach, what they recognize in man, okay? But their solution, I don't recall. Their solution is not biblical. 
Integrating your dark side to yourself is not what Jesus came to do. He came to use his blood to wipe that dark side away. But then consciously renewing your mind, remembering yourself.